they offered. All right. The buyer brings the price to the table. We establish a value. We think our house should be worth between 144 and 149 based upon all of those items. When the seller comes in, or I misspoke, sorry. When the buyer comes in and offers, he offers market price, and that's what the property ends up selling for. And you want that market price to be in the range of our CMA. If I can get the seller to believe the value is this and the buyer to offer that value, we get a sale and that final sale is the market price. And that's what we are trying to get is the price inside of our market value. Now there's another word called market cost. Here's a third one or cost. This is what it actually costs to build the property. All right, what it actually costs. Now, we know just from being an adult in the real estate market that there are two good rooms to rehab, kitchen, master bath, right? And if I put $10,000 into the kitchen cost, does that raise the value $10,000? No, not at all. All right. Matter of fact, the Builders Association will tell you that 75 to 80 cents on the dollar is about the best you will get. You put 10 grand in, it may raise the value 7,500 or 8,000. And that's not always true because you'll find here in a minute you just keep adding doesn't always linearly add the money all right and we'll talk about that here in a minute so cost and this is one of the things that i talk about when i teach investing there are two terms that we typically like to use one is called remodeling i want to remodel that is typically where you get less than the money you put into it that's what we just talked about. I put 10 grand into the kitchen, ceramic backsplash, stainless steel appliances, one of those touch faucets, but I didn't get 10 grand out of it. The other one is called rehabbing. This is what your rehabbers want to do. This is where the value is more than the cost. I bought a house for 40, I put 40 into it, I sold it for a hundred and I made money. That other 40 that I put into it increased the value $60,000. That is typically rehabbing where the caught, the value is more. Now here's the problem that most people don't understand. Remodeling does not typically affect the appraisal. No one really cares that you've got a ceramic backsplash and stainless steel appliances. That is not going to turn your $150,000 house into a $170,000 house. All right. Now, it may make the best $150,000 house on the market. So when the buyer goes shopping and he sees two houses, one has got vinyl and the old olive green kind of appliances and this one has got ceramic tile and it's stainless steel which one would you buy that one but if you want to increase the value you have to change the configuration add a basement or finish the basement add a bathroom add a bedroom now you're truly taking your three bedroom two bath into a four bedroom two bath that will greatly change the value because you're now playing in the next tier of property, so to speak, all right? So remodeling and rehabbing, those are how I usually define it. Remodeling, less value than you put into it. Rehabbing is more value. And you typically have to do that by changing the configuration. I love investors that call me and go, hey, 
if you see a property on the MLS, I can get for cheap and maybe add a coat of paint and new carpet and then double my money. Call me. Uh, no, because if that would happen, guess what? I'd be doing it. You know, now you want to buy a property and completely reconfigure the roof with the new bedroom I add on to it. Go right ahead. That will change the value. Unless you get a really, really lucky, great purchase, adding paint and a new carpet doesn't really change the value. All right. It may make it a newer, best property, still a three bedroom, two bath. All right. That's what it's going to be comped against. Because you'll notice later when we pull our comps or our comparables, we don't look for stainless steel appliances. We don't look for ceramic tile. None of that stuff pops up on the radar. So who cares that one's got one and one's got the other for evaluation? Doesn't really play a role in it. Now, over on the next page, there are, yes, was there a question? Yeah, I was gonna say like, does adding like amenities like hot tubs, pools, and stuff like that would that add any like value to the house? Um, there is a over on the next page. There's a principle. There's a term called principle of contribution. I'm on page three thirteen. The principle of contribution says that the sum may be greater than the parts. All right, and that will affect the value. So you add a things like a deck, that could change it. Um, you add a thing. I'm not going to say pool. Um, I am a level one tax assessor for the state. I can assess properties. Remember the equalization factor we talked about? And I told you, you guys didn't have the education. I do. And I am for the state of Indiana. The funny thing is when you go out and uh, assess a property to get an assessed value, there's a little column called pool above ground pool in the column there is no positive value addition for an above ground pool that box is actually blacked out you can't even add a number an above ground pool always detracts from value at best it may be zero what about landscape Landscaping could, that is one of the factors. In Indiana, we call it a Q factor. There are 14 points in that equalization. Uh, architecture and design is one of them. Landscaping is one of them, um, things like that. That can change the, assess, the assessed value. And I don't think appraisers actually use landscaping uh, as a comp, all right? We'll get to it in a minute, and I'll show you what they really do. OK, but when you assess it, above ground pools never add value. So over on the next page there on 313 is a list of things that will change the value. The first one is called the principle of anticipation. The principle of anticipation says if you buy property and hold it long enough, the value will go up. And we've talked about this under that term called the permanence of investment. I told you land will always be worth more in the future than it is today. That is the principle of anticipation. If you think about some of the overpasses that are around Indianapolis, I grew up in Hancock County in Greenfield, Mount Comfort Exchange or the exit when I was growing up was a two lane road going over the interstate. Now it's four or six lanes, there's McDonald's, there's truck stops, there's gas station. That land is way more valuable than it was 30 years ago through the principle of, an, of anticipation, okay? Which also ties into the principle of change. Things change that will increase the value. How many of you remember when the county line exit wasn't even in existence on I-65? It was just an overpass. It changed about 03, 04, and maybe not even that. It may have been 96, 97. Wasn't even an exit. There were the Walmart is and all that wasn't. So that would be a principle of change 
that farmer that owned that land probably got a pretty penny when they added the exit and then all those buildings started building, okay? The principle of competition. I will challenge any of you to think of two. You may get lucky and think of one, but think of two Wendy's and tell me there's not a McDonald's within a mile of it. I always tend to notice that with CVS and Walgreens. CVS and Walgreens are the same thing. Pizza Hut and Domino's. Wendy's business model literally is to build within a mile of McDonald's. They let McDonald's do all of the work. What's the traffic count? What's the average income? And then they build and Wendy's goes, okay, let's build there. All right, that's their principle of competition because they know at any given time, there are people that are gonna go, oh, I'm hungry, what do you want, McDonald's? Oh, there's a Wendy's, let's go to that instead. CVS and Walgreen. When CVS buys a corner right there on County Line and 135, all three of the other corners value went up because they understand that that property is going to bring in other either competitors or associated uh, businesses. Strip center users, strip center owners love Subway. Subways do the same thing right now. They put a subway in their strip center. That makes all of the other inline properties more valuable because Subway is the number one franchise that people go to eat currently. And while they're going to Subway, oh, look, there's a barbershop next door or a nail salon or an insurance guy. I'll stop and see, get that done while I go to the Subway for lunch. So that kind of thing happens all of the time. Um, you see a farmland, you'll see a sign that says, coming soon, Davis Homes. Within a couple of weeks, the other farm across the street, coming soon. You know, Dura Builders, under the principle of competition, it raises the value of all the property. The principle of conformity, the principle of conformity says the more a property looks like it's supposed to, the more value it get. All right. Now, by a show of thumbs up, how many are South Siders here? South side of Indianapolis. You guys know over there on uh, 31 South. There is a Walmart, uh, an International House of Pancakes, Hooters, uh, Outback, right? All of that right in that area. They are on the east side of the road. What are those structures on the west side of the road? Anybody? Well, they are businesses, but they look like homes. Very good. Are they homes? Well, they look like homes, or, or or are they businesses? Well, the problem is now, because of 31 growing so much, that, that when they were when 31 was created, those were homes. Now they're businesses, but they still look like homes. All right. So the value that they get may not be the same as an office building, like the school sits in a true office building, it looks like an office building. It's three stories, got a glass atrium, it's got a big sign out front, a parking lot. So it looks like what most people would assume an office building should look like. It conforms to our definition. So therefore, the value is probably better than the value of, <clears throat> of that structure that looks like a house, but really is a business. Now, the principle of conformity is really weird because it can completely go the other direction. Do you guys know what the Jaeger building is? Jaeger are two brothers that started building these and there's like eight of them throughout. There's one on the south side, one up in Noblesville, out in Plainfield. If you can picture Smith Valley Road and 135, 
it sits just west of 